Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elizabeth and today's video is going to be a slow living morning routine. I'm a 25 year old mom of three and I stay at home with my kids all day every day and in this video I'm going to show you a little glimpse of our morning routine, some cooking and some cleaning and everything we get up to. I hope you enjoy the video and subscribe for more. Let's get into it. So the first thing I did this morning was I started by making one of my kids' favorite breakfast, sourdough pancakes. And then I'll just fry these up in my cast iron skillet. And this is one of our favorite breakfasts. We absolutely love it. Basil, I know how much we like. Dude, I love some chocolate chips. You can put some <laughs> on each. Yeah, wait, that one doesn't have any. That's why I'm, that. try I'm trying to uh -oh. put it on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Don't you? Once all of our pancakes were done, I just topped them with some organic maple syrup, probably a little bit too much, and served them up for everyone. And this was a really delicious breakfast. Right now, if you can see behind me, I'm about to start on some dough. I'm gonna try and make homemade sourdough pumpernickel bagels. So I thought I'd try to make them homemade and make them sourdough with my starter, but I can't find a real recipe pretty much anywhere online for sourdough pumpernickel, but I'm so excited to try them. Oh, it's gonna be so good. So I'm gonna show you guys just like how I kind of creatively try to make this recipe up. So the first thing I did for this recipe is start by finding all of my spices that I was going to need to make these pumpernickel bagels. So I needed to grab my rye flour, brown sugar, cocoa powder, salt, molasses. I started by adding a half a cup of my sourdough starter into my mixer, along with about three cups of regular all-purpose flour and then I added one cup of rye flour and I used a mixture of dark rye and regular rye flour.
Next, I added one tablespoon of brown sugar, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, a quarter cup of molasses, one cup of water, and two teaspoons of pink salt. And I mix that all up for about 10 minutes. Now here I'm just filling up my canisters with some of my favorite einkorn flour. I like to use this to feed my starter, my sourdough starter. So I like to keep a canister full of that at all times. And then I'll just take some water and some of that einkorn flour and add it into my sourdough starter, mix it up, and let that sit out and that ferments for the next time I want to make something with sourdough. Okay, so I'd say that looks pretty good to me. It's not as dark as I would have imagined it, but what? we'll see what this does. I'm making homemade pumpernickel bagels. Oh. But I don't have a re Ooh, careful. I don't, <laughs> I don't have a real recipe. What do you uh, think? Uh, uh, sourdough? Yeah, sourdough. But you need it more lighter. I need it lighter? Ah, I think I need it darker. Pumpernickel's dark. It's like the color of cocoa. Are you guys playing in dirt? Yeah. <laughs> You're having fun. You're having fun. Yeah, imagine that. We're doing construction. Oh boy. Thank you, buddy. And we're doing okay. farm. <laughs> Good. Okay. You love farm. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to let this rise for a while and see what this does. Okay, so when I'm rising things, hold on, this looks super bright. Okay, so when I'm rising things and I don't want them to take forever, what I do is I take a tea towel and I just make it really, really damp. And then I'll just kind of fold it over and I just pop it right over the bowl to my stand mixer. And then I'll turn the light on in my oven and I'll just pop it in there. And this helps it rise just a little bit faster. It's like pristine temperature for rising dough. So that's a good trick. If you have an oven light, just make sure your oven's off and like you hadn't just baked something in it. And then just pop it in there with a wet towel and it'll help it rise just a little bit better in my experience at least. I also, I don't have a dinner plan yet, but I just bought a new crock pot and it's the Magnolia one. I'm so excited. It's gonna match my kitchen. <laughs> What did we? Anyway, um, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the box and see what this looks like. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do it because in the next little bit, I'm going to be doing some of my favorite, easy, healthy, whole food crock pot meals. You're not going to want to miss it. I promise you these are going to be recipes that you guys make all the time. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss them. And I am so excited to try this out. For this day in the life, I feel like you guys haven't even seen my kids around, but it's because it's a semi warm winter day today. So they're just gone. They're in the backyard playing with like mud and dirt and water and they are so happy. And I'm happy because on days like this, I can do so many things in the house. Like, so they're pretty content kids right now. <laughs> I promise they're around but that is one of the joys of having good weather is your kids can play outside and for me my goal is to get my kids outside pretty much as much as possible because that is where they are happiest they don't want to be cooped up in the house all day like doing nothing they want to be outside digging in dirt fresh air trampoline swings running around and they're so happy and my happy spot is there in the kitchen making homemade bagels <laughs> my house is a disaster today the living room my bedroom the only thing that's even semi clean right now is my kitchen but like I said my fridge is a disaster so this might turn into a miniature clean with me <laughs>
After we finished cleaning, it was snack time number 20 for my kids. There are never too many snacks in a day. So I'm just slicing up. I ended up cutting up about three apples for them with some peanut butter and they all just sat around and shared that. And now that my dough had rested for about an hour, now I went ahead and I'm going to start rolling this out into my individual bagels. So I ended up making about eight bagels and I just started by cutting the dough into equal portions. And then I went ahead and started rolling them all into balls. So once they were all in the shape that I wanted them to be, I ended up flattening them out with a heavy mason jar, like a half gallon mason jar that worked pretty well. So I flattened them out as much as I could get them to flatten. <laughs> and then I ended up using like a piping bag tip to cut the hole out in the middle. And this actually worked really well to make bagels. Then I put them on the baking sheet to rise for a little while and then I ended up boiling them and baking them off. And they turned out pretty well. They weren't exactly like pumpernickel. I needed a darker cocoa but they still were edible and good and we enjoyed them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so I can see you again in another video. Bye guys!